Howdy folks, I'm Aaron, welcome to Lowe's Joinery. Um, today I'm going to do a quick video, um, and it's another spraying video, but I'm going to try and go over some techniques, maybe a few, uh, bit of information uh, regarding pressure and whatnot. So I'm just going to flip the screen around now, we'll get straight onto some spraying, because I've got a cabinet ready, uh, and I've got the paint gun all charged up, and it's ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, hopefully you learn something from it. Um, and yeah, just enjoy the video. Okay then folks, so, uh, I know it's not the best picture, but I've got this cabinet here that I made a few days ago. Um, and it needs painting. As you can see, I've already given it, I've given it a primer sanded it i'll give it a top coat um sanded that back and I was, there was a few bits that needed touching up uh, a bit of filler uh, just on the uh, where the styles meet the rails on the doors um so that's i've done all the prep on that that's all ready to rock and roll now um i just thought i'd do a quick video maybe just show a few techniques you can watch me spraying not so fast because i do a lot of time lapse videos so um, I'm going to spray this. I'll go over the sort of rundown of how I do it and then uh, take it from there. If you want to have a go yourself, it's all good. So, yeah. Right, so I've got a... I've got a 100 litre compressor in the in the next room, just behind the camera. Um, I've got this black rubber hose. This was from Screwfix. I think it was about 20 quid, 15 quid. Uh, I think it's about a 10 metre one, I want to say. Um, I've just got a standard connector on there. Um, and then we get down to the business end, I suppose, if you want to call it the business end. Um, or the main part, I suppose, of any spraying job is the actual gun itself. Um, this is not an expensive gun at all. This gun cost me uh, about £17 uh, from my local auto body shop. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the gun it is anyway um, but I use this for everything I spray I use this for um, it's a 1.3 tip you get different tip sizes um, so the bigger the tip the thicker the paint can come through smaller the tip thinner the paint will have to be um, obviously the bigger the tip or the needle um, is obviously going to put more paint on the product um, or the item that you spray in. Uh, so just bear that in mind. It is a bit of a minefield of things to remember, but once you spray, once you start spraying, it's absolutely amazing. Like it's just the finish is absolutely brilliant. Like I'll show you. Um, on this when 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 we've sprayed it, I'll give you a close up with the camera. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I've had this gun now for a couple of years. Hasn't let me down. I've got this one up here. This is the two mil one. Um, like I say, I think between them there's probably about forty quid's worth of gun there. Um, and they do me absolutely brilliantly. They're a conventional spray gun. There's there's a few types. You've got a conventional, you've got a HVLP, you've got an LVLP, um, and then you've got your minis. You've got these as well. These are this is a HVLP, excuse me. It's a HVLP. I don't really use that much, but it's an absolute freaking amazing gun. I don't use it that much, but when I do pick it up, I always say, bloody hell, this gun's good. So. There's a few types out there. It is quite scary when you do get out there and get into the nitty gritty of it, but persevere with it. It's you know, once you get the technique and the setup behind you, you literally you just need your paint and that's it for the project. You know, there's no sort of outlay of anything else. It's just that initial start up. Um, so <coughs> you've got your gun. We'll start at the top. You've got your pot. You can have two types of pots. You can have a, well, there's a few actually, but we'll just go over a couple. <coughs> um, you can have your gravity fed. 
which is this one, and you can have your bottom feed, which is suction fed. Obviously, gravity, the weight of the paint goes down. Um, obviously, you pull your trigger, releases the needle, lets the paint out. The air comes through the two side holes, and that's what atomizes the paint. Your suction one, obviously, it sucks the paint up. I prefer these. Um, I do a lot of my spraying like this in the workshop, so they're a perfect, it's a perfect gun for me, really. Um, and a lot of the car sprayers are gravity fed as well. You can get pressure pots um, where you don't have any pot on the gun at all, but if you want to, if you want me to go into that one a bit more, let me know and I'll I'll fish one out and I'll uh, have the um, break down the atomy of it for you and tell you what's what and that. So yeah, so you got your pot. Um, like I say, your needles, the bigger, the smaller. Um, for top coats, the general rule of thumb, top coats I use about a 1.3. Um, primer, I use a 2.0 or 2 mil, or you can get a 1.8. Um, but that's what I generally use, and I thin my paint down to around about the consistency of single cream little bit thinner maybe depending on what day i mean I, this this video i could make this video about an hour long going into the heat the temperatures the paint you spray in what you spray in it's it, it could this could go on but as a short quick breakdown um i use a 1.3 i thin the paint down and i use the rule of thumb of a consistency of single cream and then you literally you do your tester and you, you you get the feel for it. You'll know your gun when you use it. You'll know your gun. You'll know how it sprays, what you need consistency-wise to spray with, um, and, and bits like that. And you pick it up. You pick it up quickly enough. So at your part, at your needle, you've got a few little knobs on the end. Not me start at the bottom no no we'll start up here so this one here this big one this is your needle this is the fluid one this is so uh, the more you unscrew this the further back the trigger will go and that's what will give more paint out of the spray so you pull your if i was to pull this right the way in i very rarely change this um I normally know what it's set on. People normally say, oh, it's three turns. I don't do mine like that. So I can't pull that trigger now. I've wound that right in. I can't pull it. I normally have it for my top coat. I normally have mine round about there. A bit of paint coming out there, sorry folks. I normally have mine round about there. That's literally just as I can see the thread come in. <coughs> so I don't know, that's probably four or five turns out maybe something like that so the further out you screw that the further back your trigger will go the more paint will come out of the spray gun um, so if you want to put a heavier coat on lighter coat you wind it back and forth as you would need um, you've got this one at the bottom now I'll tell you what these two do together in a minute, but this is for your, this is a regulator, an on the sort of on gun regulator, uh, as opposed to this one, which is a little mini regulator, which I keep on the gun. Always get one of them. Um, but yeah, I always use, I always, because I'm using that, you want a true reading. So you want to have that gun open all the time. I wind it out as much as possible that that's what that is um but yeah i'll tell you what those are in a minute um and then you've got this one this is your fan size this the, the this can be <coughs> on the side here you can have it on the side sometimes or it's just above you might even have three Maybe there. Uh, have I got one with three? No. 
You normally have two or three there, <clears throat> or it could be on the side like this little mini one, which is nice because you can sort of spray and alter it like that if you need to. <coughs> but yeah, so you've got your pot, you've got your needle size, which if you look, it's straight across your needle, so you can't miss that one. That's an easy one to sort of identify. The more you open it, the more paint comes out. The less you open it, or the more you turn it in, <coughs> the less paint comes out. <coughs> this is your fan size, I'll show you about that in a bit. Um, once again, if you was to close that all the way, you'd have a dot. If you was to open it, your fan size gets bigger and bigger. Um, that's a quick sort of breakdown of the gun. The additions I've got on here, <coughs> this is like I said, just, this is your regulator. Um, I'll go over the, the sort of bar I use in a bit. So, so, like I said, that's your regulator. I have mine set at two bar. That's my sort of general starting position with this gun because I know the pressure I need to, to get a good atomization. Um, <coughs> you can you screw it onto the bottom of your gun um, and then you regulate it with this. This That's why I say this one needs to be fully open that's on the gun. Because if that's not fully open, you're not going to get a true reading on your um, regulator. So that one fully open. <coughs> that one, I start at two bar, see how I'm going. If the paint's a bit thinner, I'll dial that down a little bit, maybe go to 1.5. I very, very rarely go any higher than two bar. Two bar, pardon me, is quite, it's quite a lot of pressure for the paint, really, um, especially the thickness I spray at. <coughs> but once again, don't take that as a, um, that's a, you know that that's what you need. It all depends on what you're spraying how warm the paint is, if you've warmed it, how thin or thick the paint is. <coughs> There's quite a few factors involved when it does come to it. But like I say, I know it's scary, but once you do it, you will pick it up and you will, you will know, you'll, you'll pick it up quite fast and you'll know, you'll pick the gun up and go, oh, this is it, sweet as a nut, and you'll be spraying. I do now, so last thing that's on this gun, not so much of a problem with this paint because it's water-based. I do stick to water-based paints a lot. <coughs> um, but this is a uh, a water trap. This just catches any sort of condensation or water that's in the airline. Saves it coming up through the gun and ruining your piece. Obviously, like I say... Not so important with the water-based paint that's spraying. But when you start talking of the ACs, uh, the acid catalyst or the um, oil-based paints, <clears throat> it does cause a bit of a problem because you don't want water on your oiled finish because it's not going to react very well and it will ruin the finish. So <coughs> if you are spraying oil based or um, anything like that you do need a water trap on your on your thing really you can get a few you can get wall mounted ones the more the better I think is the rule of thumb um, I've just got the one because I spray a lot of water base so I don't really I don't really worry about that um, I think what we'll do now is we will flip um, the screen over and try and do a bit of spraying on some timber. <clears throat> a bit of sheet good I've got. Before you start kicking off, obviously I'm going to be talking to the camera. I've got the ventilation is as much as possible. So I'm going to do some light spraying. I'm not going to full spray with no mask on because that's just dangerous. And I'm not going to do that. Um... So yeah, I think we'll turn the screen around, get some spray, and I'll show you the different 
fan sizes, um, a quick pressure change just to show you what happens, this, that and the other. And then, yeah, if it's all right with you lot, I'm going to get this painted because there is a lovely lady inside waiting for me. So, should we crack on? <clears throat> okay then, so, I've got a little board here. I'm going to show you a couple of little um, runs, uh, features on the gun. And then I think I'm going to flip around and get this thing sprayed. So... <clears throat> Right, so now, now we have air to the gun, as you could see. And if I do that, literally there's a, there's a, you can just push it so it puts air out. If I was to do any more, it put paint out. So you, that's how you test your regulator. There's just a little touch. It, you have to do it by feel, I can't really explain it. going to get that dust off there right so starting at two so if we dial the top one in that's your fan size that gives us a spot okay now this paint's quite runny actually um, but it should be okay just to show you um, we want that on too so if we that's with it done right the way up. So if we open it a lot. You're getting a bit of a different. Um, you're getting a bit of a different sort of uh, shape. As you can see, you want, you want a bit of a, it's like a dumbbell shape you really want. So I'm going to open that paint a little bit more. I'm going to touch this just up to the two bar. And then we'll see what we get. <coughs> That's getting a lot more nicer now. That's the sort of shape we want. I don't know if I've got a bit of a bit stuck in there, to be honest, because it's not... <coughs> Draw that back, airflow open. Right. <coughs> so, there we go, that's better now. Feel that. That, you've got a bit of a dumbbell shape going on there. Um, if I have to show you to tighten the fluid tip in, it's quite hard on this one, but as you can see, I'm not really getting much. From that, as you can see, I do a line on the bottom. That's not really putting much on at all. <coughs> you really want that open so you get in that sort of shape to it. That might be a bit too much. There we go. Like that. <coughs> That's your perfect shape. As a rule of thumb, I go about a fist and a half away when I'm spraying. So a fist and a half, what's that? <clears throat> it's that about nine inches. And then that will give you a perfect spray. Um, and you want to always make sure that you overlap enough. Because <coughs> um, if you don't overlap, you'll get lines. Um, you'll get lines in your paint and you don't want that. Um, so yeah, that was the little features. Like I say, I start at two bar and then I sort of, I go to what I need um, to get the right atomization. That's the right atomization for me. There's a little bit, you can see a little bit of that shape, that dumbbell shape. You've got a nice, bed of paint in the middle and then the fine fine little atomization around the edge that's what you want to be heading for always always have a sample first 
of spraying just to see what you're dealing with because you'd I'd hate to do that and have too much paint on the product because you'd have to wait sand it back in it's just putting time on the job really folks you don't want that um <coughs> so yeah I'm gonna turn around crack on with this and then I'll give you a quick run over of what it looks like just after it's sprayed Right then, so I've given you a quick breakdown. Like I say, this video would end up being 50 minutes long if I told you and spoke and spoke and spoke and talked on and talked on, but I didn't want to because I want viewers. Um, I'm going to give this a quick spray now. Uh, it's getting a bit late. Um, goes without saying, whenever you spray paint, always always wear a mask because whether it's water-based oil-based uh, acid catalyst whatever you're spraying you don't want to be breathing it in folks okay um i've taped off all the hinges that's why the door's still on <clears throat> um this top doesn't need to be done because it's going to be covered this edge on this side doesn't need to be done because it's going against the wall um, so I'm going to apply the same techniques I told you about over there, making sure I overlap. I'm going to do the sides, I'm going to do all the edges first. So you want to try and do as much of the awkward, hard to reach, twist your gun around jobs first and be left with the big panel last. I'm going to do all of this up on here, I'll take it off. Um, or I might just leave it like that actually and spray it like that we'll see how we go um, so yeah let's get some spraying folks hope you enjoy So, I hope you like it. Um, a few things. I did forget to say, um, obviously I sanded that down um, and before I got the spraying on the guan or on the go, um, I blew it off with the, the airline to get any dust off and I did actually go over it with some uh, fast drying degreaser which is a U-Pol product. <coughs> um, it's what they use before they spray any sort of vans um or cars the auto body people um it's just i just use it because it's a fast drying one i'll just wipe it on with a um lint free cloth and it just gets rid of it all i should have shown it but i'm really sorry i didn't um i think you agree the finish is amazing i am absolutely over the moon man so yeah i'm buzzing about that that is literally waiting for some solid oak to arrive um, I can make that up, um, biscuit that together, put that on, and then she's off to the client. Another one out of the workshop, jobs are good. And um, I've got a video on cleaning guns out. I'll 
put a link in the description to that as well um, if you want to know or if you want to see how I do it. A um, couple of other things as well. Just wanted to say, let's put this on the twist, okay, like that. <laughs> um, when you do use it, always try, if you can, and start the project before. Try and start it before, so you pull the air, and then you go, and then stop after the project. It's a very, very important technique to try and master, um, because if you start it on the project, you're going to get that burst of paint, um, and you're going to get build up. So always start before and end after. So you'd go over there, and you'd go stop, stop like that. Sound effects are free, folks. Um, yeah, really. If all the biggest biggest thing I will say is practice um, just keep going at it it won't you won't pick it up first time but honestly practice practice and I keep looking it's absolutely flawless man the finish is brilliant um, so yeah <coughs> once you spray mate you're, you're on a winner um, it's one of my biggest selling points to my items. It's a spray finish, uh, as hard as a factory finish. Um, if you want, let me know and I'll do a video on the paints I use. It's an absolute amazing um, company. Um, but yeah, let me know. So once again, folks, um, I hope you like the video. If you do, uh, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Sorry for rambling on, but, you know, I just want to try and relay as much information as possible. And it's so hard talking to my bloody phone. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Share it amongst your friends if you did like it. If you found it interesting, let me know. If you want to know about the paints, I'll do some more. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Click the bell button. And that will notify you every time I chuck another video up. Thanks for the love, folks. And I will see you next time. I'm off to bed.